Well, I'm so excited for the second time <laughs> to address you. So today I'm excited to share a pivotal decision uh, that we've made um, for our Unitarian Universalist Church, and this grew out of the growth growth team. Our church has been a sanctuary for those seeking personal and spiritual growth, a haven where social, gender, and environmental justice are at the heart of our mission. Now we are taking a significant step forward to extend our reach into the wider community, inviting like-minded individuals to join us on this journey. We recognize there are many out there who share our values, but may not yet know that a community like ours exists. By actively reaching out, we aim to bridge this gap, creating connections with those who are searching for a welcoming and inclusive spiritual home. Our programs such as Thoughtful Thursdays, mindfulness courses, wellness retreats, emotional intelligence classes, climate change challenge, and more, these initiatives are just uh, not just activities, but they embody our commitment to holistic well-being and social and environmental justice. Our decision to grow our congregation is rooted in our belief that everyone deserves a place where they can explore their beliefs, engage in meaningful conversations, and work towards a more just world. By communicating our values and programs to the broader community, we are not only inviting others to join us, but also amplifying the impact of our collective efforts. Imagine the ripple effect as more individuals inspired by our principles contribute to the causes that we champion. Together, we can create a stronger, more vibrant community that stands as a beacon of hope and progress. As we embark on this journey, we began by promoting our individual programs last year and years previous, like Thoughtful Thursdays, mindfulness classes, retreats, personal growth workshops, climate change, sustainability programs. And we were pl pleased to see that there was a strong response from the wider community, largely because we had it on Zoom, made it accessible, and interests of the programs that we offer. However, we soon realized that these programs were valuable on their own, could be see but they could be seen as forming a cohesive curriculum, a linkage of ideas and values that together provided a powerful path to personal, spiritual, and social change. By bringing them together, we saw that we could help people in our community better understand what we stand for and what we offer. Over the past year, the growth team explored how to integrate these programs and communicate this unified vision in our outreach efforts. This process led us to the concept of the curriculum of the heart to describe this body of programs. However, as we refined our vision, we arrived with a clear expression of our programming, which we called Living from the Heart. See our new logo that we'll be using for kind of to uh, promote these programs over the coming year. Living from the Heart beautifully encapsulates our programs and our intent. It reflects our commitment to fostering personal and spiritual growth, promoting social justice, and addressing urgent issues like climate change, sustain sustainability, and many other justice issues. It signifies a way of life that is deeply rooted in compassion, mindful communication, and purposeful action. By bringing our programs together under this unifying theme, we feel we can better convey the breadth and depth of what UUCC can offer to our community. We can show that our faith community is not just a place for individual experience, but a vibrant community dedicated to personal growth and social healing and justice. So what's the value of offering programming that teaches us about living from the heart? In our contemporary world marked by continuous technological advancements and an ever-increasing awareness of global and personal suffering, many of us find ourselves caught in a paradox. While science and technology have undoubtedly improved our lives in numerous ways, they have also in intensified the challenges we face. The relentless pace and ma of materialism of modern society often overshadows our deeper yearnings for meaning and fulfillment. In this context, the wisdom of ancient spiritual traditions and modern psychology offer powerful tools for not only surviving, but thriving during this time of rapid change, uncertainty, and division. 
To address these challenges, we're fortunate to have many wise practitioners and scholars in the modern times who have studied, translated, and synthesized over 2,500 years of spiritual wisdom in our moder- to, and converted that into a modern language and practices that are relevant in our secular world and also for spiritual audiences. One such guide is Dr. Roger Walsh, who will be with us soon. Dr. Roger Walsh, who published a book titled Essential Spirituality, which offers a bridge between the ancient and the modern and the spiritual and the psychological. Dr. Walsh is a distinguished psychiatrist and for the past 40 years has studied and practiced the wisdom of both world religions and indigenous wisdom. He recently published a second edition of his book titled The World of Shamanism. I've taught mindfulness courses for three years using Dr. Walsh's uh, Essential Spirituality book at Friendship Village, and my students have found it very accessible and profound in its wisdom as a guide for daily living, and it's a great introduction to interfaith studies because he brings up pithy uh, quotes from each of the religious and spiritual traditions as he does his teaching process. Dr. Walsh's book will be one of several resources that will guide our Living from the Heart programming for the upcoming year. And we are very excited that Dr. Walsh, who um, who is a good friend of mine from my days as a program officer at the Fetzer Institute, will be our featured speaker for our Thoughtful Thursday on August 22nd, this Thursday. Dr. Walsh will be in dialogue with me to explore the principles expressed in essential spirituality and their application to meeting the challenges of today's world of uncertainty and division. So please join us this Thursday and you can be engaged, Dr. Walsh. He's an amazing person. To give you a taste of the breadth uh, and depth of living from the heart programming, I will briefly describe the seven core principles outlined in essential spirituality. So if you want to take a nap, this is the time because it it may be a little bit more like a lecture. But what I'll do is I'll just kind of offer a little definition of each of the seven core principles, and then I'll provide kind of some examples of how you might actually cultivate that capacity. This book, Essential Spirituality, is really a practice book. He will describe an area, but then he gives you four, six, eight practices for each of the seven core principles to bring that into your life. So it's it gives you a wide range of things that you can use uh, to, to experience these, these core principles. So the first principle, transform your motivation and reduce craving and connect to your deepest values. This is a tough one. This principle emphasizes shifting from superficial wants and cravings to discovering and pursuing your deeper intrinsic aspirations. And some of the practices that he talks about. First, we identify cravings. You begin by examining our current motivations. Are they driven by external validation, materialistic goals, or fleeting pleasures? We recognize the difference between temporary cravings and enduring desires. I would say yes. Another practice, explore your deepest aspirations. In this, in this uh, practice, you reflect on what, you tru- what truly fulfills you at the deepest level. This could involve doing introspection, meditation, or journaling to uncover what aligns with your core values and passions. And a third practice in this area, align actions with true aspirations. Once you have identified these deeper aspirations, you can make conscious efforts to align your daily actions and decisions with these deeper qualities. This might involve pursuing meaningful work, nurturing important relationships, or engaging in activities that resonate with your inner self. A second core principle of the seven, cultivating emotional wisdom. You're probably familiar with this one. Heal your heart and learn to love. So this is defined as emotional wisdom involves understanding and balancing your emotions in a way that leads to healing and deeper connection connections with ourself and others. Some of the practices include acknowledge the process of emotions. You can take time to acknowledge your feelings rather than suppressing them. 
You can engage in practices like mindfulness or even therapy to process and heal from the past emotional wounds that you may be working with. Another practice, developing empathy. You could cultivate empathy by actively listening to others and trying to understand their perspectives and emotions. And this helps build deeper, more compassionate relationships. A third practice, practicing self-love and forgiveness. This is a challenging one. You learn to love and forgive yourself, recognize your worth, and let go of self-criticism. This self-compassion will enable you to better love and connect with others. And as I go through these, <clears throat> some of our programming will work with these concepts. Um, I'll be offering uh, a twice a month mindfulness uh, program that will walk through these principles in detail over the coming probably a couple of years, probably take about that long. So if you're interested in this, you can join the mindfulness classes via Zoom and we'll walk through all these practices and you can integrate those as, as it fits your lifestyle. A third principle, live ethically. So as I'm going through these, you may notice what I, I should back up a little bit. These seven core principles really uh, arose from Dr. Walsh's research over about 15, 20 years of world religions. And what he found there was not, most every world religion had these seven core principles, some emphasized more, some more than others, but they were, these were the essential spiritual practices across traditions. So you might call this the perennial wisdom. That's the term I would use. So this is a third principle that was found across the world religious traditions. To live ethically and feel good by doing good. Ethical living involves making choices that are aligned with your deepest values and that contribute positively to the world and to your family. Practices include reflect, we begin by reflecting our, our values. So you define what ethical living means to you. Consider principles such as honesty, integrity, and respect for others. Sounds like our UU principles. Incorporate ethical choices. This is very relevant to our world of sustainability. You make conscious decisions in your daily life that reflect these values. You might include sustainable practices, ethical consumption, or volunteering. A third practice, experience fulfillment. You notice how living according to your values impacts your sense of well-being and satisfaction. Acting in accordance with your principles often leads to a deeper sense of fulfillment and purpose. And this is kind of an essential one because um, it's that Cognitive dissonance that often arises from how we're acting versus how we wish we were acting. Now, there's complexity to dealing with that, but the more aligned we are with our highest values, the less regret we tend to have and self-judgment we have in life. Um, and the other side of that is also accepting where you are without beating yourself up. So it's kind of a <laughs> dual-edged sword with that practice. Um Fourth core principle, concentrate and calm your mind. This one you're probably fairly familiar with. This is uh, mental clarity and calm are essential for effective decision-making, emotional balance, and overall well-being. We know that the more we rest in the present moment and have less rumination about, pa especially past regrets or holding on to past experiences or looking into the future, fear about the future, the less uh, uh, emotionally balanced we are. And oftentimes we may experience more anxiety and depression. So the, these practices of coming more into the moment, uh, appreciating the moment are very powerful for our mental and emotional health. So one of the practices is mindfulness, where we engage in mindfulness techniques such as meditation, deep breathing, or yoga to calm the mind and emotions and improve our concentration and open the heart. We can create a peaceful environment. You design your physical space, your home, your office, wherever that, your car, wherever it may be, to minimize distractions and promote tranquility. This minimize distractions, we just got an electric car. I think this is a problem. <laughs> There's too many distractions in the new technology. Uh, this can include organizing your workspace, reducing clutter, and incorporating elements that soothe you. So kind of that feng shui piece um, can be very soothing to the mind the more orderly the environment is. You can do practices like develop focus, focus, implement strategies to enhance concentration, such as setting goals, breaking up tasks into smaller steps, and so forth. That's more of the time management side. The fifth principle is awakening your spiritual vision, seeing clearly and recognizing the sacred in all things. And again, another 
uh, UU principle, seeing that the inherent worth and dignity of all things. Spiritual vision involves perceiving the deeper meaning and interconnectedness of all life. Very much an indigenous shaman, shamanistic type uh, perspective. Practices include, we expand awareness to engage in practices that heighten your awareness of the sacred and, inter sacred and interconnected nature of life, using meditation, nature walks, studying spiritual texts, and so forth. Gratitude is an important one in this area. Cultivating gratitude by regularly practicing gratitude to recognize and appreciate the sacredness in everyday moments and experiences. And of course, our new sciences are really pointing to we even know our own microbiome. We're not this human form that's separate from the world around us. So we have a lot of interacting microbes and bacteria and vi human viruses that are all integral to sustaining our life. So we're really a web of life. Uh, seek meaning by uh, reflecting on the deeper meaning behind life's events and experiences. Recognize how they contribute to your growth and understanding. We're almost done. We're at the sixth, sixth principle. It's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> but the idea is you may take one of these principles and that may be your touchstone. That may be where you really resonate and are grounded. The others are connected, um, but uh, it may not be as prominent. And that's what's kind of nice about the seven core principles is that by our personality type, by our cultural experience, we may be naturally drawn to one or another. And, but with, within each one, you can explore a fairly deep spiritual experience. So the sixth core principle is cultivate spiritual intelligence, develop wisdom, and understand life. And this pr practice focuses on spiritual intelligence, which is the ability to apply spiritual insights and wisdom to navigate life's challenges and opportunities. And this is an important one. In fact, I was talking to Regina this morning. I've been a meditator for a long, long time, but I haven't had a as integrative of approach as what Walsh does, even though I've been teaching it, this is going to force or force me or invite me to adopt a bit more of this. I don't do as much reflection on um, what my deepest values are and how I'm aligning with that. I do the spiritual practice, which naturally brings balance and harmony into me, but I don't do that re reflective piece. And I think that is kind of my next stage of growth to really be able to integrate what I'm experiencing at that deeper level to my daily actions. And because if it's just a nice experience when you sit for 20 minutes in the morning and then it doesn't extend in your daily life, it's really just like taking a drink or something. So, so you know, it's a very short-term experience, short-lived experience. So this practice, again, spiritual intelligence, which is the ability to apply spiritual insight and wisdom to navigate life's challenges and opportunities, ways that we can cultivate that, we study spiritual teachings, and that could be psychological teachings, self-help. You can engage with spiritual philosophies and teachings that resonate with you. This could involve reading texts or going to workshops, retreats, things like that. We integrate wisdom by applying spiritual insights into our daily life, making decisions that reflect a deeper understanding of yourself and the world. We reflect and grow by regarding reflect by regularly reflecting on our experiences and learning to deepen our spiritual understanding by applying that to our daily life, kind of what I was just saying. And the final principle, seventh principle, is express spirit in action. Embrace generosity, service, and social justice. So this is that other piece of, while it's wonderful to have inner balance and joy and uh, self-compassion uh, and uh, equanimity, if we don't bring that into the world where we see um, injustice, it's it's there's probably going to be a dissonance in our life. Um, there's a natural urge as we develop self-compassion and other compassion, as the word compassion denotes that it's about acting to reduce the suffering of others. It's not just having empathy for someone. It's actually feeling the pain of the others and being motivated to take action to reduce the suffering of others. So this practice focuses on living spiritually and involves translating your beliefs and values into actions that benefit others and foster a sense of joy and purpose. Some of the practices include engage in acts of kindness by looking for opportunities to serve others and contribute to your community. Many of you are deeply engaged in that kind of work. 
This can include volunteering, supporting charitable causes, taking action to heal social uh, and environmental injustice issues. We can embrace generosity as well by practicing generosity not only in material ways, but also through time, attention, and compassion. And we can find joy in service and social, social activism by recognizing the joy and fulfillment that come from helping others, making a positive impact and healing of, of social justice. We can reflect on how these acts align with our values and enhance our sense of purpose. So by integrating these seven principles into our daily lives, you can develop a more balanced approach to personal growth, emotional well-being, spiritual development, and social and environmental healing which all lead to a more balanced and fulfilling life. So now that we've had a, a bit of time to understand these core principles, I'm gonna test each of you uh, to see. Uh, I thought I might uh, use a little bit of a guided practice to actually experience these rather than just, because that's what this is about. We can read all these things, but if we don't really take the time to reflect upon them and see our own internal response, mental, emotional, physical body response to these teachings, we don't really integrate it at a level that it changes how the brain works, how the, how the heart works. So I thought we would, I would do a little guided practice here, probably about 10 minutes, and then we'll conclude. So if you want to get comfortable, you're, you're used to me doing, if you've been, if you had some of my practices here at church before, you know kind of what I'll be doing, but might be expanded a little bit today. So I thought we would start with a, a brief body scan, and then we'll move into some mindful breathing, and we'll close with a loving kindness practice. So if you wanted to settle in, if you're open to doing this practice, if you're, if you're not, that's fine. You can do whatever you'd like quietly in your chair. Um, this watch your mind wandering. That's an interesting practice in itself to see where it goes. But if you'd like to follow the guidance system, noticing my guidance and working with us as best you can. And the main thing with these practices is there's no right or wrong way to be doing this. Um, basically, we're developing the capacity to slow down enough with the chattering mind to notice first what's going on as things come and go. So we're not quite so enmeshed in our thinking. Um, and once we can see the coming and going, we can see how that stimulate certain emotions or certain body reactions. Um, and then ultimately we can start to notice the space between the chatter and notice that there's a, another way of experiencing reality outside of the thinking mind, that there's a way of this being in the world that's a direct experience without the mediating quality of the mental analysis, which may sound a little unfamiliar. So if you want to begin, just if you can check your posture and maybe be sitting upright, feet are flat on the floor, feel the earth under the feet, feel this mother that supports us. Eyes can be closed if you'd like, and maybe the chin tip slightly down so we're not looking back. And just beginning with a little bit of gratitude, gratitude for this body, for this breath, for this mother that we're sitting here on, standing on, giving gratitude to this mother earth for the air we breathe, the plants that give us so generously of their life-giving oxygen that cleanses the body and sustains us, the water we drink, the rains that have been coming the last few days that replenish the rivers and the oceans and the aquifers so that we may be sustained, and the bounty of the earth, which is given unconditionally to us to sustain this body, we give thanks. And thanks to all those relationships that sustain you, friends, family, your pets, nature itself, the beauty will be seen. Some of you may love fall beautiful changes of the seasons that we get to experience. And now we'll move into the body scan. So just noticing the feet contacting the floor and just noticing, say noticing 
we're just being with sensations as they come and go, as the feet contact your shoes and shoes on the floor. We might notice sensations are pleasant, some may be unpleasant, some may be this neutral or boring. And just feeling that groundedness through the feet with the earth, feeling that stability. And inviting the feet to soften, soothe, and rest. Soften, soothe, and rest. And bringing the attention up through the legs, through the ankles, the calves, the knees, up through the thighs, and just noticing the sits bones now as they contact the chair. And just feeling into that contact. Maybe there's warmth or coolness, heaviness. And noticing the back against the chair, again, just being with sensations of the ribs and the spine contacting the chair. And the value of this simple practice of being with sensations in the body is a simple and direct form of awareness in the moment. We're just resting in what is through the experience of sensations. Thoughts may be running around in the background and those can kind of just rest in the background like distant clouds but no need to entertain them or push them away. We're just resting in the present moment sensations in that back as it contacts the chair. And just inviting the whole shoulders, back and hips to soften, soothe and rest. Soften, soothe and rest, just resting. Sensing into the abdomen, the chest, Maybe noticing the sensation of the rise and fall of the abdomen and chest. And again, inviting the whole front of the body, the abdomen, the ribs, the chest, the heart, the lungs, soften. Soothe and rest, soften, soothe and rest, just resting. Right now, there's really nothing to do, nowhere to get to, and no problems to solve. Direct experience of the body in this moment. Noticing the shoulders now, Find the shoulders to soften, soothe, and rest. Noticing the left arm and dropping down into the left hand and just noticing sensations there in that left hand. Palm of the hand, the fingers, the fingertips. And just inviting that whole left arm and hand to soften, soothe, and rest. <clears throat> And moving up into the left shoulder, now across to the right shoulder, dropping down the right arm, upper arm, forearm, down through the wrist, into the right hand. And just noticing again, sensations there in the palm, the fingers, fingertips of the left, of the right hand. And we just invite that whole right arm and hand to soften, soothe, and rest. And then coming up that right arm into the shoulders, inviting the shoulders, the neck, back of the neck, sides of the neck, front of the neck, the throat, the jaw, 
soften, soothe, and rest. And just maybe releasing the jaw a little bit. Maybe the mouth even opens slightly. The tongue drops from the roof of the mouth. It's up, up against the palate. And we just really invite that jaw, the throat, the neck and shoulders to soften, soothe, and rest. Soften, soothe, and rest. And then sensing into the face now. There's oftentimes we have a lot of contraction, micro contraction of the muscles in the face that we're often unaware of. But just inviting the face, noticing the chin, the cheeks, the jaw, the lips, around the nose, the nose itself, soften, soothe, and rest. Noticing the eyes behind the eyes the brow and forehead. And again, just inviting all those muscles of the face to just kind of droop and soften, kind of like you're in a deep sleep. No contraction at all. And finally, noticing the scalp, top of the head, sides of the head, the ears, the back of the head and neck. Soften, soothe and rest. And then just bringing attention to the whole of the body, wherever attention is drawn or just a general sense of being awake and aware of the body, just resting in the sensations of the body. Just resting. And now we'll move into the mindful breathing. This will be much shorter. And just noticing the sensation of the breathing, maybe in the abdomen or the chest, wherever it's easiest for you to notice that physical sensation of in-breath and out-breath. So just find a location to be with the sensation of the breath and the body. And again, just inviting the body to soften, soothe, and rest. The essential ingredients of these practices are attentive relaxation. So we're not bearing down with concentration. We're just resting with attention in a moment-by-moment -moment experience of the breath in the body. And once you've located a place to be with the breath, maybe the belly or the chest, or maybe it's the whole upper body, just feeling that sensation, pay particular attention to the beginning of the in-breath and the beginning of the out-breath. So we're following the whole breath through with sensation, but we're just being attentive so that there's a an awareness of that transition when we begin at breath, whether it's an in-breath, or an out breath. And now maybe noticing the beginning of the each breath and the end of each breath. And there may be even space, slight space between breaths, very, very slight. So we're being very attentive now to the whole beginning, middle and end of each breath, the space between, transition between breaths. And if that's a little too stressful to be that precise, you can just fall back to noticing the beginning of each breath and the sensations in between. And now we'll close with the loving kindness practice. So just begin by bringing into your mind's eye 
This could be a living person, someone who's passed on. It could be a pet. It might even be someplace in nature. But a place where you connect with someone that invites a space of acceptance and compassion, joy and beauty, whether it be a human being or a pet or nature. And just imagine yourself being in that space, that place, with that being, with that setting. And just taking in the joy and the love of that being, of that place, whatever it is for you. And just breathing that into the heart center at the center of the chest. And just feeling that joy kind of fill the entire body, every cell of the body just enlivened by this joy, bringing a smile to the body, to the mind, the face. And then just giving gratitude for this experience, for having had this relationship, giving thanks. And silently just wishing this being, may you, so we're just sending this love to this being. May you be happy and joyful in this moment. May you be healthy in mind healthy in body, healthy in spirit. May you know inner peace and peace in all your relationships. May you be free from suffering and free from the causes of suffering. And then just connecting to this energy and extending it to ourselves feeling this joy in the heart, filling the body. May I be happy and joyful in this moment. May I be healthy in mind and body and spirit. May I know inner peace and peace in all my relationships. May I be free from suffering and free from the causes of suffering. And finally, to extending this wish for loving kindness for all beings, just have an imagine of radiating, imagine radiating this loving kindness out in front of you, behind you, to the left, to the right, above and below. And we're just radiating this out to the this room here, across the Americas, across the oceans, Europe and Africa and Asia, India, Pacific regions, the Arctic, Antarctic, the whole planet and beyond, across this solar system and galaxy, this radiating out like dropping a loving kindness pebble into an infinite ocean as the ripples radiate out. May all beings be happy and joyful. I'm just imagining that radiating out. May all beings be healthy in mind, healthy in body, healthy in spirit. May all beings know inner peace and peace in their relationships. May all beings be free from suffering and free from the causes of suffering. And when you're ready, you can take a few deep breaths. Take a few inhales, wiggling the toes, the fingers. And as you open your eyes, this kind of, I often re recommend kind of keeping a peripheral vision so that we don't narrow 
attention too quickly to objects, but it's kind of a more of a spacious, inclusive experience of the space around us. So in conclusion, our Living from the Heart programming this year will be a valuable resource to those seeking to navigate the complexities of modern life while deepening their spiritual practice and service to our community. Whether you are new to spirituality or seeking to deepen existing practice, our programming over the coming year will provide practical tools and profound, hopefully profound insights that can help you awaken your heart, your mind, and your service to the wider community. As we strive to find meaning and fulfillment in our fast-paced world, we hope our Living from the Heart programming will serve as a beacon, illuminating the path to a more spiritually enriched and compassionate life, and help UUCC continue to reach out and welcome new members into our community. So thank you for your commitment to this vision. Together, we will continue to build a community that truly embodies our Unitarian Universalist values and principles. And I'll close with this brief reading. This is from Rumi. I'll read this twice. <clears throat> Be empty of worrying. Think of who created thought. Think of who created thought. Why do you stay in prison when the door is so wide open? Move outside the tangle of fear thinking. Live in silence. Flow down and down into always widening rings of being. This is the second reading of it. Be empty of worrying. Think of who created thought. Why do you stay in prison when the door is so wide open? Move outside the tangle of fear thinking. Live in silence. Flow down and down into always widening rings of being. So thank you. And that ends our service. And we'll